black square with your name. Um, I have a few things today that I want to talk about, and I think we're going to use a little bit of the time for chaos con again. Is that the hope? I think so, possibly. <laughs> okay, I think that's also the hope. Um, so I guess one of my questions, I wasn't at DNI yesterday. Did DNI settle on the template thing? No, we didn't address that. <clears throat> I think um, it was Don and Matt Snell and I, and mm -hmm. one other person whose name I forgot, but is in the minutes. Okay. Um, and then Kevin came in a little bit later. Um, so I don't, we did not address that. We, ad we went through the issues and pull requests in that working group, but we did not address okay. anything related to Sorry. the template. We, we did actually <coughs> oh, we did. Did actually talk about that. I think it was right before you joined. Okay. Um, but basically, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Basically, what we um, what we said was that you know Georg had exchanged some emails with you with yeah. what he thought, and that sounded reasonable to everybody. Okay. And I think the next step was for Georg to um, put what he was thinking together in some kind of an example to give to you. Okay. I think was where the email thread had, ended. Yeah, I had asked that he maybe like write one up just so we could see it. I think he might be out of town at the moment. But yeah. I can do it too, kind of based on the thread. If the thread is good enough to go off of, that's kind of all I need. Okay. Okay. Taking notes. Okay. Um, thank you. The second thing that I had was the code in, the Google code in. Did anybody catch the email that I sent this morning? So the Linux Foundation is going to be submitting a code in proposal. So this is on the email list as well. And in the past, they've done this for Google Summer of Code, where the Linux Foundation just submits as a organization and projects can submit their project ideas. ideas. Um, I've done this before, this model with SPDX, and it worked totally fine. Um, so I don't know what people's thoughts are on that. So the, the code in is a, a, an event that we've been having a discussion on the email list about um, it's for, I think, people in high school to participate in open source projects, and I think it occurs over the school year. Um, and there was a proposal that Chaos submit a code-in proposal, um, and everybody seemed pretty okay with that. Um, so I guess I'm just offering an alternative as to how we submit this. I'm not the one submitting it, so... Is it the, the submitting it as chaos versus submitting it to the Linux Foundation? Is that what you're... I can not hear you real well, Carter. Yeah, Carter, your microphone okay. is... Yeah, that's yeah. probably due to my very cheap knockoff AirPods. Um, let me yeah. use my... Any better? Yeah. yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so is it, were you talking about just the difference between submitting it through chaos versus submitting it through the Linux Foundation? Yep, those are kind of our two choices for code in, I think, at the moment. So I had sent out, I can send it again real quickly here. So, or put it in the um, chat, mm -hmm. track it down here. Um, so, oops. Uh, oh my God, I cannot go. I'm. Don't mind me, I'm trying to do something. <laughs> um, so this is the link to the, I put it in the chat and I'll put it in the document. Oh, this is the Linux Foundation site. Yeah, so. October. Okay. So the so idea. we have to submit by that 29th date then? Is there yeah, a yeah. deadline? Yep, so I think the 20, 
I think the Linux Foundation is looking for feedback a week earlier. So you would just add a proposal to this wiki page. Mm -hmm. So if there was something coming from chaos or more than one thing coming from chaos, I think we would just add a proposal to this page and then the LF would submit on behalf of everybody and what has happened like with Google Summer of Code in the past with the Linux Foundation is they submit projects kind of on behalf of anybody and then the Linux mm -hmm. Foundation is awarded, awarded the thing, awarded the opportunity to participate in this uh, project. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, if, does anybody have a thought one way or the other? I'm not submitting, I'm just the messenger that I, that I would <laughs> return to other people. So, so what are you submitting concretely? Um, well, the proposal was that that chaos as a community would submit it as a as an organization. Okay. Versus submitting it under the Linux Foundation. Okay. Maybe nobody cares tremendously. Uh, if it's if it takes less work out of our hands, then I think submitting it under Linux Foundation would be fine. It, would, it also gives us the the buy in from them. It would be less, I think it would be less work because we just have to mm -hmm. put a proposal into the wiki. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody know, does Coden come with stipends for, you know, the way Google Summer of Code did? So Google Summer um, of Code provides dollars for the projects. So that might be the only thing I'd want to clarify. So I'm really, I'm skimming through the document very quickly that's linked in the, the wiki. It says there is something about a finalist or grand prize winner. Okay, sounds like it's a I don't, award. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know if that's monetary. Let's see, I, maybe I, though. I don't think so, mm. uh, not for the students. Uh, students Arthur, don't get paid. Arthur, do you know if the, the uh, proposing organizations receive dollars the way that Google Summer of Code does? I'll have to read through there. Okay. Not sure about that. Okay. But the so students don't. They don't receive dollars? Mm -hmm. It looks like they can get, they get so uh, I just put a link in the chat. Um, they get digital certificates, t-shirts, jackets, and a grand prize trip is right. what is listed on the website. Google headquarters. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, sounds like I'll kind of suggest that we explore this a little bit because mm -hmm. I don't see anything that pays for organizations. That would be my only mm -hmm. like, thing to think about. It's not that huge of an issue, but mm -hmm. okay. And would these, would these tasks be like from chaos as a whole, or would they also be perhaps from like specific software projects like Augur or Gamora Lab, or just kind of uh, be whatever we decide the task to be? I think it's whatever we decide the task to be. Okay. And I was just curious to submit a couple, because I think a couple mm -hmm. people have expressed interest in being mentors. Mm -hmm. I think that the difference here, right, with versus Google Summer of Code is keep the projects more accessible. Mm -hmm. the students who made this may be their first engagement with these types of projects. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be important to keep in mind. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well. If you're interested in participating, I guess sort of let me know and then I'll let other people know or join that email thread and we can go from there. Um, okay, thank you. That was that for me. Um, and then the last thing I had, and it's before we talk about Chaos Con, um, or if other people have things too, um, is we have Kara, I'm, I'm looking at you, Kara, on the call. Kara is from the Jenkins X project. And I had a chance to talk with her yesterday. Seems like a long time ago already, but. <laughs> Moons ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was just yesterday. Um, so one of the things that we have talked about in the chaos project is to put together like community reports for participating communities and Kate, I don't know if Kate's on right now, no, but Kate had expressed interest in doing this with Zephyr and Kara had expressed interest in doing this with Jenkins X as well, which is pretty cool. So the idea would be is that we would um, 
use the chaos metrics as we've put forward in the first release slash second release coming out with FOSDEM um, and help the communities put together community reports based on these chaos metrics. Um, of course, using the tools, whether Grimoire Lab or Augur to really get this done. But I think the idea is to show kind of in a, a small two page PDF, um, how these metrics can be seen within these communities. It kind of reminded me, so I've got Manrique on and Valerio. You know the Uber report that Patergia had done? Something small like that. I think that was just a single page PDF, if you recall. So I can share that as well. But um, so anyway, this is, I put together a, a, <laughs> a really rough template um, for people, but I thought, so I'll put it here in the chat. I think I sent the right thing. I mean, this is just super simple, right? So in the case of say Jenkins X, just kind of giving a link to, to, to Jenkins X and what Jenkins X is all about, describing the partnership with the chaos project. Um, and I think the hope is, is to really start getting these metrics in practice and see how they can help inform community decision-making. Of course, some of the metrics will take more work. So particularly those around say DNI, some may be a little bit easier to, to gather with respect to trace data. Um, I think the idea here is to present a professional looking document that folks from Jenkins X or folks from Zephyr can bring to their community to just start kind of shedding some light or improving transparency around health related items. Um, I would, I'm, I'm offering to, to lead this, right? So, um, and try to coordinate efforts in this regard. So I don't know what people's thoughts are on this. We've talked about this in the past, right? I mean, I think examples are good, obviously, since I was on the call with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, maybe this isn't what, uh, what the purpose of this is, but is this sort of, uh, uh, like are these like the one or two pager documents meant to sort of communicate the state of the community using some of the metrics that we have in chaos or yes. okay cool yeah I mean yeah I'd be interested in seeing those because I mean what I've I've seen a lot of communities do including including ours is sort of like if somebody from the community management team publishes a blog post and then maybe they won't highlight all the metrics they have, but they'll pick like a few that, that they want to highlight for the particular year or quarter or however they want to do it. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how different communities do it. And maybe it's helpful to have like a different collections huh. within, within chaos, but. Yeah, so I think this, this first yeah. part, um, totally agreed. I mean, I think there's a couple of goals that I have in mind. One is to um, just do this in the first place, right? <laughs> provide transparency on the metrics. Um, if we start categorizing, or what did you say? Not categorizing, what was the word you used? All right, collections, used together as collections. Um, that might be great. And then um, I would really like to continue to work with the communities, whether it's Zephyr or Jenkins X, to kind of take a look at how these metrics inform decision making within the community, what they mean. Yep. So that'll be really enlightening as well, because it's quite possible that folks at Jenkins X will look at these results and be like, this means nothing to us. This has not informed anything, or, or quite the opposite. <laughs> I don't mean to start on the negative side, but quite the opposite. This might be incredibly useful, and this has changed the way that we think about this has changed the way that we think about how our community functions, right? And this has changed the way that we've made decisions. So that's the hope here. I don't know what other people think. Ray, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a great idea. I think it's I think it's a good way for us to provide some insight um, it, for a couple of projects into kind of an overview of what their what their community looks like. And then at the same time, it also gives us some promotion for 
for our metrics and maybe we can do this with a few more projects and maybe projects will start to pick it up and do it themselves as well with, with the metrics that we have. I mean, I, I think I don't see any downside, I guess is what I'm saying. I think this is all upside. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Right on. Um, I'm going to try to reach out to the Linux foundation and see if they can't help us create a professional looking report. Cause I can't do that. <laughs> if you can't tell by my first draft, um, so something that's a little, a little bit better looking. I just wanted to give you some like in, some ideas here. Um, so I'll I'll see if they can't help. I'm hoping they can. They have provided a lot of support marketing wise on a lot of different things, whether it's chaos cons or the website or anything like that. So I don't see why they would say no. Um, the other thing. So the only other thing. This is I'm looking at you, Don, for this one. But we don't have common in here because common is kind of this. I never, I'm never really sure how to talk about common. Common is common. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. I mean, it, it <laughs> represented in a lot of these different spaces. So I, I, I think that's, I think that's fine. I don't think you necessarily have to have common represented in, in something like this because it is sort of the, the underlying metrics that drive, drive other okay. things. I think we should, I think we should focus on highlighting the things that make sense for the projects that we're analyzing. I mean, some of them, there might be there might be more things in evolution that we'd want to focus on than in another area, for example. Okay. And so I think we should I think we should be flexible. I wouldn't I guess what I'm saying is I, I wouldn't go to the Linux Foundation and ask them to help us create like a template that we can use for all of them. I would be a little bit more flexible and do do something that's a little bit custom depending on the needs of the community and the data that we have and what people are interested in. That's totally Totally fair. I was th in terms of like the template from the LF, it was mostly just like logos, <laughs> making it look nice. And then we could fill in the kind yeah. of customized to the community. All right, cool. All right. I just want to make sure you didn't feel like we were getting left off. I feel cheated. I feel <laughs> left out. Well, it's, it's, I, anyway. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Um, Tara, I don't know if you wanted to, to say anything on this. In the, sorry, yeah. I pressed in the Slack channel the, the PDF we prepared for Uber. Because oh, thank you. Said that before, so it's pretty there. You can post it on the... And basically, the procedure was basically we sit down with the community, in this case with the community manager, and they say, okay, this is the metrics we would like to see in a nice way, in a yep. PDF or whatever. So we prepare the numbers, we give them to gave them to some well designers, you know, <laughs> not yeah. engineers, real designers. And so they put them in that nice, nice chart that you have seen there. Awesome. This is this is exactly what was in my mind. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Great. I just wanted to say um, I'm very happy to be on this call, very happy to work with all of you. Very helpful to us in the Ingen's X project. And we're really excited to move forward on it. And so we definitely want to uh, work with you all and help you in any way get the information you need to give us the best metrics. And very cool to be involved. Well, I will be reaching out to you probably in Great. fairly short order. I'd like to get this going sooner rather than later. Great. Okay, cool. Well, it's nice to have you on the call, Cara. Um, all right. So honestly, those are my three things. So the DNI template, code in and Zephyr slash Jenkins X for the, the PDF thing. Um, does anybody want to bring anything forward from any of their working groups or software side of things? I always like to keep that open for this call. Maybe just a reminder that we do have a common working group call on okay. Thursday. So this is our Thursday. I'll send the, I'll send something out to the list shortly. Okay. Do we, um, for Common, while I have you on, do you have yeah. any sense of like new metrics that are coming from Common? No, not yet. I mean, other than the ones we've been talking about, like geography, okay. for example. Um, no, I, uh, I want to make a little more progress with the tools and see what metrics have already been, are already being used in the tools and to find some of those okay. has been okay. kind of my approach, but we haven't, we haven't made any progress on exactly what those are. Okay. When when is the deadline for the re next release? Uh, it'll be probably like January one because we like to do that one month, you know, comment yeah. period. Okay. So just right after Christmas, before the you know, or just right around that spot. Okay. So we have some time yet. Yeah, we do. That's the dangerous thing. <laughs> so, um, so would anybody from from Grimoire Lab or Augur be able to join the common call this Thursday at ten o'clock U.S. Central? 
Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Yeah, I'm generally on the call. I've just had, I've had a couple of blips the last two meetings, but I'll be there this week. Okay. I'll try to be there too. Okay. I think maybe the the thing to think about maybe ahead of time is what are some common metrics that Grimoire Lab and Augur are currently deploying so that um, we can just capture those and and bring them forward. So, so maybe like a informal action item for <laughs> Manrique and Sean to think about that for common. All right, cool. Um, any other DNI, sir? I know it was not hugely attended this Monday, but it sounds like you went through some issues and PRs and closed out some things. Okay. Like, was it housekeeping stuff that occurred mostly on Monday? Okay. Um, does anybody know, same question from DNI, any metrics that are being moved forward there? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Same questions, risk, evolution, value. Not the Andy. Uh, yeah. uh, as far as evolution goes, um, myself and one of the other people from uh, the Augur team are gonna sit down and go through our, our list of metrics. Okay. Um, later today or tomorrow, I believe, and we're gonna try to, I know we talked on the call about having some more metrics to start thinking about that were implemented in tooling, as well as stuff that's in the repository. So we're gonna sit down together and, and go through some of those and start trying to draft that list. So those will be incoming, as well as the, okay. the templating changes um, okay. that we talked about. Okay, it'll be, I think the templating is gonna be a little tricky in evolution, so it might take a little mm -hmm. bit back and forth, just because they were a little bit different looking sometimes. Yeah. And some of the other metrics. So it, but it also, so then it sounds like evolutions kind of following the same hope that common is following, which is identifying what already exists mm -hmm. and trying to, to document those as mm -hmm. works. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Sean, anything on, on risk? Not today. I think we've, we've um, nothing new that I, I have to report on risk since the last time we met. Okay. Because we I haven't met since the last, basically risk has not met since the last time. We met. Oh, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Matt. <laughs> what are you, yeah. Matt? I'm just saying um, for the license part of things for risk, we are um, working on restructuring some of the database stuff for license. So we're going to have a new version of that out um, sometime soon. Can't say when. We have to figure out a good time to do that. Okay. Um, I do know that I have actually, I have a one question. This is for uh is manrique still on yeah manrique so is the um is this license scanner as part of grimoire lab the nomos and scan code are those part of the release at this moment i th i think it's not part of the whole release but they can be called from the setup file so i mean valerio can explain more of that okay you mean Graal, if Graal is part of the Grimoire Lab current release, right? Yeah, because I know you guys have been pushing the, the lines of code and then um, also the licensing with scan code and with, with Nomos. And I, 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 I wasn't quite sure where it was at. I know it was in development. I wasn't sure if it was part of a release. And yes, Graal. It's, uh, it's integrated. It's in the release. So if you take the, the latest release, yeah. We find the setup CFT and project JSON, and it should work. So it is there. Yes. Should be. Okay. But you have to report. Uh, you have to define the. Um, if you are using Nomos, for instance, you have to provide the path to Nomos. This is part of. Uh, I mean, it's something that we have to improve. But at the moment, the the file is not there. So what about the, scan code? Scan code uh, is the same. You have to download the the repository and and link it to to your. Uh, your instance. Okay, so it, um, so it sounds like it's there, not totally seamless yet, but part of the it is part of the release. Yes. yes. Do you have because documentation on that? Uh, yes. Uh, Can you share it. Because uh, I know some people are. I know a number of people are becoming increasingly interested in seeing these kinds of things, like license output or license coverage. 
So if you have documentation on how to do the, like get Grimoire Lab going and then get the connections to either Nomos as one scanner or scan code as a different scanner, uh, that'd be helpful. Okay. Uh, I'm going to send an email or just add things to the chat? Just put it in the chat and then I'll put it in the document. We can get that okay. out. Perfect. I'm going to look for it. Okay. Thanks. Um, and then Matt, I know that you've been also doing some, this is all within risk to me. So I know Matt, um, you've been, Matt Snell, you've been doing some updates too with Augur to also link out to the TLDRs of the found licenses. So right now Augur is doing. That is in the current release of Augur to link out to the TLDRs. Yeah. So. So Matt, do you have any comments on that? Are you still yeah. on? Okay. Yeah. Well, we may also be linking out to um, the specific SPDX pages for those as well, because they have an API that makes it easy. And okay. for the release. Say that again for the SPDX doc. We may be able to link, we, we will be able to link to the SPDX um, for ones that aren't in TLDR legal, because only about half of them are covered by TLDR legal. Only um, half the licenses? Oh, I see what you're saying. So we can link out to SPDX as well, and that would be a little more, a little more coverage there. Okay, makes me wonder if, <laughs> I hate to say it, but if we should only link out to SPDX. We can do that too. You know what I mean? A TLDR legal, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. It's a nice way to know the do's and don'ts of licenses, you know. Um, so essentially what Augur is trying to do is they do a scan, this is also for the folks at Grimoire Lab, they do a scan on the package to identify licenses and license coverage using Nomos, not scan code. Um, and then from the results, there's a link out, a link provided on the license to TLDR. Thanks Valerio to give you some more information on that particular license. So Matt, maybe you want to think about how you link out. Yeah, uh, we, uh, we're also going to be able to add accounts soon, which is what we're doing the structural change. Which I think is probably. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Great. Thank you. Any, I know that we have the weekly software calls now, but any updates from software folks that you want to get out to everybody? Our team basically had exams last week, so there's no auger updates this week. Okay. We're, um, we're, we were pretty buried in, ex in the exam period for students. Apparently students have to do things for class. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Um, anybody from Grimoire Lab? We have been working, discussing a lot about the documentation we already have. Okay. We, we are not sure sometimes we can call it even documentation or not, depending on the kind of users facing Grimoire Lab. So we are working on a new tutorial. We have uh, agreed on a new TOC, on the table of content. That means because it would be also okay. to have your feedback there. Um, I'm gonna paste it here in the in the chat. Um, so any feedback about the the structure of the new tutorial? Because I, we being that the current tutorial, the existing one, is quite focused on people that um, wants to mm, wants to understand the deep the deep knowledge of how we, we Lab works, each use case, each component, and things like that. And from time to time, people comes to us as okay, I want to start Grimor Lab as Care has done the last uh, blog post. It's just ten minutes. I, I can make it happen or not? What are the dependencies? What that, what do I need? I, do I need Docker? Do I need Python or, or what? Mm -hmm. We plan to start from scratch from the 
but a specific use case, like people that want to start getting data and visualizing the data on a, on a dashboard and make it quickly. And then from there, you can dive into details like, okay, which each component is doing, how you can, if you are a technical person, probably how I can program my own thing on top of this, how I can integrate it with the current API and all this stuff. But the first thing is get something working as you said, Matt, last week, I love that quote, how you can drive a half fast and then, okay, I don't need to understand all the internals of combustion engines. No, <laughs> you didn't find drive. me. <laughs> I, I think it's great, the push on, on easing the, just kind of getting the, the tools in front of people as quickly as possible. Yeah. And the other discussion we are having now, in um, at least from the community perspective, is if, is if we move to uh, instead of using Elasticsearch and Kibana provided by Elastic, move to Open Distro. I have opened a couple of issues about that. Uh, this Open Distro from Elasticsearch, I don't know you know that project, it's a 100% free open source project. Uh, initiated or incubated by AWS Open Source uh, Group. Mm -hmm. um, it has some nice features that people have been asking to Grimoire Lab from time to time. Like I would like to have alerts. I would like to have uh, notifications in my email or Slack channel with some, yeah. if some the thresholds are happening. I would like to have uh, access to the data based on different roles or, or users. Um, these are things that are provided out of the box by uh, Open Distro. So we need to do some research about that. And we are doing you know that this part is already part of Calderon, the alpha thing we are working on. So these are more or less the three main yep. lines we, we are working. Okay. Um, I know that I know that the push notification, what you were talking about, that's been being asked for for a long time by a lot of people. I know that the Augur team is doing this kind of work as well. So it's cool to hear it in Grimoire Lab as well whether it's pushed to email or pushed to Slack. Cool. Just to quickly give you feedback on the blog post, the simplified approach to running Grimoire Lab. Like, excellent. I had that up and running in, you know, 10 minutes on the main uh, Jenkins X source code repository. And it was really nice to be able to like begin poking around and seeing what I was able to, to what was able to be dashboard and, and to begin to get a sense of what was available. So thank you. Oh, thank you for the feedback. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. Um, any other things on people's mind? I think the we're about ready to talk about Chaos Con. So anything else before Chaos Con? So typically, at least typically, <laughs> typically meaning last week, what we did was we basically said if people don't want to participate in the chaos con planning session, you are more than well, you're obviously more than welcome to drop off any time, but we're about ready to switch to chaos con planning, the planning session, which is like devil in the details of getting chaos con running the day before FOSDEM. So more than welcome to stick around. I warn you, if you stick around, you might get some action items on things to do for chaos con. So, <laughs> so I'll give you a minute if you want to drop off. And if you do drop off, thanks for spending some time in this weekly meeting. Uh, just a, a minute. That's happening in Belgium, right? Yeah, in Brussels. Okay. okay. You gonna go? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Love to have you there. <laughs> yeah, the, the flight is not cheap. <laughs> no, I agree with that. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna stop the recording because we are moving to the other thing. So thanks for everybody for coming. We're now moving to KSCon. <laughs>